Hi again, Doug here from X-Frames FPV and today we got a build out for you. Got the birds behind me singing. It's a beautiful day out here in California. I love the fall kind of winter season in California because it's kind of like summer in Washington which is where I just moved here about three years ago. So um, anyways, what we're going to do be doing today is a build out on the Flynoceros Ether. A-E-T-H-E-R. This is available with the same center section in a 3, 5, 5.5, and 6 inch frame. It's really got some unique and interesting design features and I really do like this frame. I'm excited to get this built for my customer and uh, so we'll go to the tabletop and we'll have it give a good look and kind of go over the parts that we're going to use in this build. Alright, so here we go. Here's a review and build out of the Flynoceros. Now this is a really interesting design in my opinion. Um, one thing I liked about it is the ease of removing arms in a crash. And what he's done is he's sandwiched, you can see there, I've got a new camera here guys so I apologize if there's some issues with focusing or whatever, it's my first time using it. But what he has done is he's machined out these center arms and, and, and kind of um, layered them on top of each other mounted these two really strong top and bottom plates together and made it to where it's still really nice and rigid, um, but allows you to only remove four bolts and the arms come out. And, um, you know, the way that, that um, he's done that also is if you can see here for the center section, you know, where you mount your flight controller and, and all that, those screws actually go through to all the way through so that, you're not having to remove those to remove the remove this bottom plate, which removes the arms. You remove the bottom plate, boom, four arms come out, stack is still there, everything in the center section remains. So I really like that design. Um, one of the other things that I like about this is this is available from three inch all the way up to six inch. So three, five, five point five, and six inch. This is a six inch here. And if you wanted to Let's say I want, I want to try a four inch or I want to try five inch. All you got to do is buy the arms and, and you're good. Um, you know what this is for a customer that this is really his first drone and it's, you know, it's, is it overkill for a first drone? Yeah. But you know, a lot of times customers in the beginning, they ask for a lot of speed. And so, you know, I'm not going to tell them, no, you know, no, you can't have a lot of speed, you know? So, um, what I do is I tune it in such a way that it gives them the ability to kind of fly it slow. And I have them start out on 3S, which is really a good way to kind of move yourself into a really fast drone. This is going to be plenty fast on 3S. And then when he puts 4S, it'll scream. Um, and so as far as the arms, you know, like I said, this is the six inch version. He's going to primarily be running probably 5.5 or 5 inch props. That gives him a little bit of advantage in this center section with having a smaller prop. Props are further away from each other. They don't get disturbed by, by the prop wash of each other as much. So it helps with the yaw. It helps with kind of the turn in a little bit with uh, when you're flying. So that's a really great thing for a lot of people. You know, is it does it work for racing? I don't know. You know, you get the advantage of the better handling with the 5 inch prop or 5.5 on a six inch frame, but then you also have the disadvantage of a bigger drone going through gates. So it's just kind of a, you know, some people are like that and some people just don't think it's worth that much. Um, arms here, this is my first frame from Flynoceros. Arms here are absolutely beautiful, nice and chamfered. Let's get some measurements here. And... Let's make sure we're zeroed out good. So four and a half, actually almost five. So they may be calling that five millimeter. My mine reads four and a half for the top and bottom plate. Those are both two. Can you read that? I'm sorry guys with this new camera. It's throwing me off a little bit and I'm not really on my game because I've not been making videos as much as I used to. <laughs> And two millimeter, yeah. So two millimeter, two millimeter top and bottom, and then two millimeter also on the cage. Um, I like cages. Uh, you can see, obviously, we're running a run cam micro on this. You can see how nice and well protected that is, and it doesn't add a lot of weight. It actually, um, you only have what do we have here? Two standoffs. 
uh, three, four standoffs on this. So no more standoffs than we normally would for a top plate and it really protects it. So I'm a fan of these cages. So that's enough about the frame. I'm, I'm excited to get this going for my customer. Um, and I think it'll be a nice durable frame. Um, availability of parts have seemed, seemed to be with flying officers really good. So I'm excited about that for motors. Well, you've already seen them down there and they're pretty, they're a motor that's easily recognizable. These are the EFA 2407s. This is the 2500 KV. And these are really nice, clean motor. You can see how well the windings are, how tight the gap is between the motor and the, between the magnets and the stator. Uh, we got a screw in the bottom instead of a clip. So that's a really good design. I really like that. Um, so those are going to go on there. Perfect KV for 5, 5.5. A little bit much. In, as I'm not a high KV guy, so a little bit more than I would fly normally on a 6-inch. But like I said, he's going to fly mostly 5.5 um, and 5. And these will work wonderful on a 6-inch. It's just more KV than... Um, than I like. I'm more of a lower KV guy. Now, as far as um, VTX, we're going to go with my, just this is my go-to. This is a TBS Unify Pro. I either run this or the Tramp. The thing I like about this over the Tramp is that this has the ability to run, um, or it's smaller. It See, the the tramp is is just a little bit bigger in this section, and this has the ability to be ran in places that the tramp just couldn't. So I love that about it. Um, we'll be using smart audio out of this, so um, he'll be able to change his the VTX and the PIDs and, and rates and all that through his sticks on his radio. The race version gives us exactly what I think we need, which is 25 to 200 milliwatts. I think that's all, I mean, I have, um, obviously the Unify goes up higher in the, the standard Unify. And then I also have the Tramp and I always just run it at 200. I found in the places at least that I fly, um, it works just fine. Anything above 200, I start to get multipathing off, off the trees and that kind of thing. So I don't find it to be an advantage. So, um, save yourself some money. It's 29.95 is the price on those. And so it's a really good buy for a really rock solid, uh, VTX for receiver. We're going to be running a standard XSR from FR Sky. Um, we've already, already talked about this run cam micro. So we run that one. And then we go into my go to here, right? You guys have seen a lot of these. This is the DYS 30 amp 4 in 1 ESC. It's laid out really well, built in voltage regulators, and it's just a really rock solid. ESC, and then we're going to write on top, sandwich right on top using these pins. The F4, you see that nice big F4 chip there from DYS as well. This has all the all the options that you can have on on Betaflight. This can take advantage of it. Um, you know the OSD, the um, LEDs, all that stuff. This takes advantage of it. Now, one thing I want to talk to you about: you there it has been some issues people have been having. And see these pins go together here. Make sure you can get that on camera. That people have been having. And, you know, it's not a huge deal. But sometimes in a crash, you know, this top part is, is soft mounted. So it moves a little bit. Bottom part is hard mounted. It does not move. And so those can come off in a crash sometimes. And it, it and then you're, you're done. I mean, you can try to solder those, but good luck. Um, the amount of time you're going to spend trying to solder those little tiny pins, you're, it, just doesn't make sense to do it in my opinion so what i do and it has worked really well i have the dy this set up on probably 60 percent of the drones that that are mine in the clubs and it works absolutely phenomenal but what i use is i use this bondic and this you can get on amazon i believe it's in the area of like $20 maybe, $25 for the whole kit, and it comes with, you know, two glues. And what you do basically is you take, you see, it's just a regular glue applicator, and you glue it. You just add some extra glue in there. Okay, I'll just do a little bit here because I'm going to do it anyways. Top and bottom. And don't, you know, don't be afraid to use, you know, a good amount. Just make sure you don't, it doesn't cover any of the connection. 
and then it's UV light activated, and that's all there is to it. And that right there is now hard plastic. It's just crazy to me. It's just like, it almost, every time I do it, I always have to confirm that it works because it almost seems like this is too good to be true. And so with that, it, it strengthens it more and I haven't had any problems. Um, uh, as far as antenna, I think we're going to be just running a, a linear dipole on this and making it real simple and real safe for him in the beginning. Um, this does have the mount for um, any kind of antenna on the back here. It works really well, actually, with, with the TBS Unify. You can see the holes line up perfectly for the TBS Unify. Um, another nice thing about this is that you can remove these two screws front and back, and this pivots out of the way, and you can do any repairs or whatever. So I just think there's a lot of thought went into this frame. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for good carbon fiber, and this is really good carbon fiber. So um, I really look forward to getting this in the air, and I also look forward to building more of their frames. I think it's, I think they're a company that um, is really going to do some great things. So, well, guys, that's it. That's another build out. Um, we're going to do, we'll do a final thoughts video and um, kind of hopefully be able to include some flight flight footage and just kind of move forward so guys appreciate you thanks for hanging in there with me and uh, you could check out my website xframesfpv.com and there you can see prices and builds that i've done um, and we're some of the if you go to the website now just be warned i'm having a new website built so some of the stuff some of the pictures are gonna be like why is that picture of a you know, ZMR 250 on here. Thought this guy built racing drones. That's like two years old. Well, a lot of those are just pictures that my my site builder put up there and I haven't had time yet to change them because building a new website has been absolutely time consuming because all of the content that I have to put in there. So I've got some exciting uh, things coming up. So check out my new website um, and you can see my email there or you can see it in the description here. And guys... I hope you have some time to fly today.